What's up guys, Gary here with self.dev. Today we are doing a little CSS tutorial. We are gonna talk about the four types of positioning in CSS. Before we get started, make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you a way to get some challenges to actually practice this. Because listening to me talk about this is great and all, but you don't actually start to learn this until you practice this on your own and position stuff on your own. So stick around to the end. Also, if this helps you out at all, give me a thumbs up because I'm trying to decide if these are worth doing or not. I feel like I'm a pretty crappy teacher, but this helps you out, give me a thumbs up, and I'll do more stuff like this. So we've got our main HTML stuff here, right? Uh, right here, we have the blue div, the big blue div, and then we have the pink box inside that div, and then we have a, another red div down on the bottom here. Also, if you wanna see this code pin, I'm gonna have a link in the description, so check there. So, the four types of positioning. Uh, this is one of the questions I had on the job interview once. I was only able to name three out of four, so hopefully after this, you'll be able to name all four and know a little bit about how they work. So the first one's static. That is what all HTML elements have by default. When an element is statically positioned, top, right, bottom, and left do not affect it, and it is in the flow of the document. So if we go down to our pink box here, we do top 100 pixels, nothing happens because it is statically positioned. Now you can still do like margin, top, 100 pixels, and move it around that way. But top, right, bottom, left, don't work. So next we have position relative. And if we just have this, it's not gonna do anything. What relative positioning does, it positions the element relative to its original position. So right now the pink boxes original position is in the top left corner, right? Now if we say left 100 pixels, it's gonna push the box from the left 100 pixels. So like I said, if we do left 100 pixels, it'll push it from the left 100 pixels or from its original position. That's its original position. This is shifted from the left 100 pixels from its original position. And then we could also do top 100 pixels and that'll push it down from the top 100 pixels too. So that is relative positioning. The third one is absolute positioning. Now with absolute positioning, what it does, it looks up through the DOM tree or through the tree at all the parent elements and whichever parent element has position relative it's gonna position pink box relative to that element. So right now, pink box says, all right, does this have relative? No, it doesn't. Does this have relative? No. And then it eventually gets to the body and the body's as high as it'll go, so it'll position itself relative to the body. An absolute element will position itself relative to the body if none of the parent elements have position relative. So let's say we do bottom zero it'll put it on the bottom of the body. Now, if we go to our blue div here and we give this position relative, now this is as high as it'll go. The blue div is as high as it'll go. So it'll position the pink box relative to the blue box here because the blue box has position relative. We could do like left zero, right zero, margin, auto. Ah. And then we got it centered in the blue box. All right, so that is absolute positioning. It just looks up through the DOM tree and positions pink box relative to its uh, to the parent that has absolute, or sorry, the parent that has a relative positioning. And if none of them have relative, it just positions it based off the body. So if we remove that, it goes back to the bottom of the body. All right, so the last one here is gonna be fixed positioning. Now this is good if you want like a nav bar to span the whole, the top of the screen. So if we do width 100, view width. Now we've got a nav bar there, and then we'll go ahead and make this 200 view height, so we've got some room to scroll. 
Now fixed positions the element relative to the viewport. So this whole box right here, this is the viewport. This whole box. So if we start scrolling, it's gonna be fixed relative to the viewport. So right now we don't have anything on there. So it's just putting it in the top left corner and the width is 100%, so it's spanning the whole way. Now if we went here and added bottom zero, it'll put it on the bottom and it'll just stay on the bottom. So fixed puts it wherever you tell it to on the viewport. We just want it to be like 25 view width. And we want it on the right, we just do bottom, right, zero. Now it's stuck in the bottom right as we scroll. Also good for like if you want like a pop-up to just sit there for like five seconds while the user's scrolling and then you can make it go away. But yeah, hope that helps out. Like I said, um, <clears throat> if you want some extra challenges to try these out and actually practice it, look in the description and I will have a way that you can get some challenges to practice this on your own. I'll also have a link to the code pin. If you want to check out the code pin, don't know how much use it's going to be, but you can play around in there if you want to. I also do resume reviews, so in portfolio reviews. So if you want me to do that, send me your resume or portfolio. My email's in the description. Um, if you have any questions on this, we have a Discord and you can come join the Discord, ask me questions in there or just post comments on YouTube and I'll try to help you out there too. And I think that's about it. Anything else you need to say? Yep, just check the description for the challenges and join the Discord so you can come talk with other devs. And I will see you next time. Peace. <clears throat> Round one.